do you want to know the best kept secret in Taft Avenue? Here it is. Since the departure of Franz Pumran from the team, the De La Salle Green Archers basketball program hasn't lived up to its reputation. Think about it. When France handled the Green Archers, they made finals appearance one after another and collected championship after championship. Did Pumran always get along with his players? No, but they were always ready for battle and never displayed intimidation when the game got really tough. His preparation was key to that. After all, 10 finals appearances and 5 championships are undisputable. That's not yet taking into account the number of blue chip recruits who became household names in the PBA after learning under Pumran's tutelage, most of whom have been ferociously loyal to their former mentor while working with him again in other capacities. Just ask Ren Ren Rutulo, whose jersey hangs in the ninth floor of the Enrique Raisin Sports Complex. In 2009, Pumran ended his tenure with De La Salle and left the team in the hands of his brother, Dindo, who had coached the UE team that went undefeated in the UP elimination round of 2007 but ultimately got swept by his big brother's green archers in the finals. His resume, although lacking a UP championship, was somewhat solid. As France sought a career in politics, Dindo was supposed to continue the winning tradition established by his brother. He was successful for a little bit by leading La Salle to the Final Four, but eventually, the partnership wasn't meant to last as issues arose both on the court and within campus. Just like that, the Pumran era was done. Jiren Tang and Ben Bala. Thus entered Eduardo Danding Kajuangko Jr. Or, in more popular terms, Boss ECJ. Oh, any of the most accomplished and relentless businessmen this continent has ever seen, Danding provided La Salle with the resources to regain what those of generations ago now call the glory years. In came Jiren Tang and Ben Mbala, the superheroes La Salle needed for a ride back to the mountain top, while other blue chippers were inserted to make DLSU the model of college basketball once again. Was it a success? Yes. La Salle won UP titles in 2013 and 2016. Though truth be told, those championships had more to do with the once in an era type of talent that JT and Big Ben possessed more than what we're seeing up north in Katipunan now, an evergreen system primed for triumph, regardless of circumstance. Since France, La Salle has had five head coaches in nine years Dindo, two years, G. Abanilla, one year, Juno Soller, three years, Alden Ao, two years, and Louis Gonzalez, one year. During that span, a La Salle team that once upon a time made the UP finals nine straight seasons has missed the final four three times, made the finals thrice, and won only two championships. Let's be honest, that's below expectations. Meanwhile, their bluer but happier rivals in Loyola Heights have won seven championships in the last 10 years. How do you think Kajuangko feels about having to hand a 14 carat? PHP 2,700,000 worthy CJ trophy to the team supported by Manny V. Pangilinan for the second straight year. Times have changed. Any W coach next year. In 2019, a decade after the glory years came to an end, the Green Archers are going to have a sixth head coach in former NBA D League mentor Jermaine Bird, according to multiple sources with knowledge of the situation, and is reported by Tiebreaker Times. An official announcement from the university is still pending. Like Tab Baldwin in his first year with Atenio, you'll be seeing the tag consultant for Bird, while PBA legend and current Alab Pilipinas assistant coach Danny Sagal is the favorite to have the head coach label for formality. Only Polo Soller will return from the previous assistant staff, while Syed Tank Wingson, Anton Altamirano, and Glenn Capacio will be replaced by Chappie Calanta, MC Abolution, and Lamont Waters. Gonzalez, who was an assistant coach under AO before being offered the head coaching gig after the latter's departure, was asked to remain as an assistant in the new regime, while getting rewarded the same salary as when he was a head coach. He refused. AYO's role in La Salle's current situation is even more significant than what's already been reported. When Kajuangko paid a hefty price to acquire him from Letran in 2015, management did so with the expectation that he would turn into this generation's Franz Pumran, the young, fearless, and talented head coach whose system of mayhem would become the ideology of a victorious DLSU program. In the beginning, the AO La Salle partnership clicked on almost all fronts. With Mbala and Tang leading the way, the Green Archers went 16-1 en route to a UAP title two years ago. Away from the practice court, Coach Alden was the guy who casually hung out around campus with his players and made them feel like he was just one of the guys. 
his brashness, unapologetic but within the rules, became his team's personality and reminded LaSalle loyalists of a time when the archers did the intimidating. But AO wanted more. According to sources, the main reason for his departure was his desire to have control of the DLSU basketball program beyond Taft Avenue. He wanted to start grooming future green archers by having a say in LaSalle's Team B, the high school clubs associated with the green and white, and beyond. DLSU Brass was not comfortable with that idea. The status quo was working, so why change it, they wondered. When Anton Altamirano, the son of former UOP champion coach Eric Altamirano who wasn't part of AO's staff, was given command of DLSU's Team B, sources say the rift between AO and management deepened. Alden was eventually offered what he wanted at UST, where he ultimately signed a six-year deal to show that he was in it for the long haul with the Growling Tigers. Switching schools is not uncommon for a head coach, but the way AO did it will irk many at DLSU for a very long time. It was about this time last year when the Green Archers, management, and coaching staff had their Christmas party following LaSalle's finals loss to Ateneo. Amid rumors he was leaving for another school, AO announced to everyone that he was returning. He shook my hand and said he will take care of the team, said a source who was present. A DLSU player, speaking under the condition of anonymity, said that Alden told the boys he would return because he loved them. Juanito Henson, one of the Philippines' veteran journalists and who works close with LaSalle administration, announced on social media that AO was returning and working towards the future with the team. AO gives LaSalle a shock. Then, a few days later, AO shocked everyone by switching allegiances. Believing they had their guy for the future, a bewildered LaSalle management was left in the cold seeking a replacement with so little time remaining. Taking that into account along with the fact that most of the team's players were already trained under the previous system, ECJ offered the spot to Gonzalez, who had spent years taking different types of coaching gigs before being offered the chance of a lifetime. Speechless when he was given the job, Gonzalez's first instinct was to talk to his wife. When she gave the go signal, he accepted. In any other timeline, this would be a tale of a hard-working man who was given the opportunity of a lifetime and succeeded. Unfortunately for Louis, the environment he was tasked to navigate through proved too big an ordeal. First, Mbalo announced he was going pro, since he was unwilling to take another few months of dealing with the UAP board's uncertainty. Second, LaSalle's future superstar, Richie Rivero, was let go by the team along with his brother Prince following off-court issues that remain unclear to this day. LaSalle bounced back and showed a lot of promise in the Phil Oil preseason tournament, but in the first game of season 81, Ton Samuel, who was pegged as Mbala's replacement, suffered a Jones fracture and missed almost the remainder of the eliminations. Gonzalez also lost his team captain Kid Montalvo for a few games, and though he returned by playing through the pain of a fractured thumb, he never truly recovered. Despite all that, LaSalle was still 8-4 with two games remaining in the eliminations with a chance at a twice-to-beat seed. Unfortunately for the Green Archers, they lost to the eventual champion Blue Eagles and then had to face it up team on fire for their fourth game in 11 days. With some help from Pumran and his Falcons, Fu stayed alive in the playoff chase and beat LaSalle thanks to an Arvin Tolentino-sized miracle. Publicly, Gonzalez took the blame to shield his boys from criticism. Privately, the head coach who was a player's favorite, which was no longer the case with AO in his second year at DLSU, stepped down from his spot following the loss to the Maroons. Win or lose against the Tamaraws, Final Four or not, Gonzalez knew he wasn't coming back as head coach. Alapag turns it down. And now, here we are. LaSalle immediately knew they needed an elite head coach who can compete with the world class strategic mind of Baldwin. According to sources, they reached out to Jimmy Alapag who turned the offer down to focus on a lab Pilipinas. They sent feelers to LPU Pirates head coach Topex Robinson, who was quickly signed to a long-term extension by Lyceum in response. There was even some interest in former Jordan national player and head coach Sam Doggles. They nearly came to an agreement with former Qatar head coach Tim Lewis, with sources saying weeks ago it was 80% close to completion as both sides met when he was in Manila with his team for a friendly against Healers. Unfortunately, the British mentor could not get out of his contract abroad. The Alab assistant suggested Bird, a long-time coach in the NBA D-League who has also worked in the Korean Basketball League.
According to sources, the plan is to have Bird signed to a three-year contract. The immediate goal is key player development, which he excels in. Just look at his website. DLSU is tired of recruiting blue chip talents, only to have their progress halted midway through their college careers. The fact that many former Green Archers, specifically Robert Bullock, turned from benchwormer at LaSalle to major contributors for other universities is also a point of emphasis. With regards to the roster, the mandate is clear, everyone has to earn their spot on the team in season 82 and beyond. With many players coming in, both transferees and high school graduates, no one is assured of being a shoo-in. DLSU still has an influx of talent, but it will be up to Bird and a championship-level lab coaching staff to develop them into a title-caliber club who can match strides with Atenio, Up, and Adamson. As for control of the team, sources say Danding is expected to take a little bit of a backseat, while team manager Rafi Villasencio runs to show along with PBA board governor Al Francis Chua, who has helped steer the San Miguel Beerman and Barangay Ginebra Gen Kings to multiple PBA titles in the past few years. The new changes within the Green Archers send a message loud and clear, this is still a basketball program that expects to win a hoop championship every season. Taking into account the names of the new personnel in place, both in front and behind the curtains, it looks like nothing less would be acceptable.